This is the World of Sports Network presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. Welcome to Monday Morning Football with the Guru. Monday, December 7, 2020, and we have a loaded show, man. So we're going to talk about the Raiders, Hail Mary against the New York Football Jets in the Trevor Lawrence Bowl, man. And then we're going to hit that and talk about the Bengals and the Dolphins, man. I got something I want to tell you all about Tua, man. I think he's more similar to this guy than what you guys are thinking about, all right? And then I got to talk about Cleveland. You all know Cleveland. You all know I love you guys, man. Cleveland, you guys are going to the playoff, man. We're going to talk about how the Browns destroyed the Titans, man. And then we got to talk about, you like that? Oh, my man, Kirk Cousin. I always like that when Kirk Cousin get the W, man. And then we got to talk about Taysing Hill and the New Orleans Saints and what's going on over there, man. Sean Payton might be one of the best um, coach right now in football, what he's doing as far as backup quarterback and get everybody prepared, man. And then we got to talk about the Colts and the Texans. You know, I, I got to do my weekly Colts show talk about you know what i'm saying and then guess what's happening in green i mean in um, philly i think we have a quarterback situation man carson wins got benched let's see what's going on so i gotta talk about that and obviously man we gotta talk about the home team took a l against the upstart new york football giants man this is monday morning football with the guru Roll the tape. Sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. Yes, sir, yes, sir. It is Monday morning football with the Goo. I appreciate y'all, man, for joining me. Once again, we're going to discuss... NFL week 13 on our episode number 13. And I got to get right to it, man. I got to get right to it, man, because I'm emotional right now, man. I'm in my emotional stage. I got to talk about the leadoff, man. We're going to talk about the Raiders and the Jets. You know what I'm saying? And then we're also going to include the Jags and the Vikings because I call this the Trevor Lawrence Bowl. The Trevor Lawrence Bowl. So now, we all know the New York football Jets want to lose games so they could be the first of all pick. It's like they're strategically planning for that. They're planning for losing games so they could get the first overall pick, which is the franchise quarterback, the prize, the Trevor Lawrence prize, right? And something almost happened to this beautiful strategic plan. Something almost happened this uh, Sunday. Something almost happened. You know what I'm saying? This dude, Sam Donald, almost ruined the whole entire plan, bro. My man Sam Donald almost ruined the whole entire plan, bro. Sam Donald, the, the, the mono having Sam Donald, the, the sickness having, you know, Sam Donald sick every other game in three games. That dude almost ruined the whole plan for Joe Douglas and the New York Football Jets organization of going 0-16, bro. They almost ruined that, man. And Sam Donald, you know what? Because you almost ruined that, I can't wait because you're going to be the first man out of there, dog. You're going to be the first man out of there because you try to mess up one of the greatest strategic things that the New York Jets probably ever had in football uh, since, since my generation because I didn't even know the Jets had done anything in my generation. So they have a chance, opportunity to get Trevor, I mean, Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence, the king ping of quarterback. I mean, the, the rosé of quarterback that's coming out right now, man. The rosé. And my man Sam Donald almost won the game against the oh, I mean, Las Vegas Raiders, man. But thank goodness my man Greg Williams ain't having that, dog. My man Greg Williams is not having that. He's like, Adam Gase, what you trying to do, man? You trying to ruin this? My man Greg Williams said, I ain't having that. I'm going to play y'all zero coverage, dog. My man GW, the last play of the game. Last play. I'm not even going to rack on my man Lamar Jackson, dude. I love a hey, Lamar. I'm not even going to get on you the corner. I'm not going to get on you, Lamar. I ain't. You know, I'm a Husker, man. I mess with the Huskers, so I ain't going to rag on you, homie. I'm going to talk about the good thing on G-Dub did because that was a great coverage he did because he's thinking high level, dog. Y'all over there talking about what is Greg Williams doing? Uh -huh. Greg Williams know what he's doing, man. It's high level thinking. I ain't trying to win no games. What is that going to do for me? What is Greg Williams and the Jets winning that? What is that going to do for Greg Williams' resume? 
What is he going to make? Is that going to change him from being a great defense corner? Or that, that, that one player is not going to change any opinion about Greg Williams. Nothing at all. None. Because you and I both know Greg Williams is an OG, man. When he comes to this game, Greg Williams got his OG badge the whole doing bounty gate. You know what I'm saying? He got his OG pass doing bounty gate so he could do whatever he wants to do, man. He got his credibility, homie. And Greg Williams was like, look, Adam Gates, you trying to ruin things? We trying to get the first of all pick. What's wrong with you, man? What the hell is wrong with you? So my man Greg Williams took it into his own hands, dog. He put the very worst cornerback, probably the worst, the worst starting cornerback in all of football, going against the fastest guard receiver, one-on-one, zero coverage, last play of the game. Bruh, bruh, we know, look, we're like this. <laughs> we don't need to be a, a multi-million dollar offensive uh, NFL coach, right? To know that when it's four seconds left in any type of level, Pee Wee, elementary, Pop Warner, JV, high school, varsity, whatever level, right? And you're down by four points. You're going to heave the ball up, dude. You're just going to heave it up. That's what you do. It's called not, you just heave it up. And the, and the Oakland Raiders, I'm sorry, the Las Vegas Raiders, Heaved it up, and the best thing happened to the New York Jets fan. The only person I was mad about this game, the only person I was probably mad was uh, Lamar Jackson because he got embarrassed. But everybody else, it went perfectly as planned, dog. You know what I'm saying? Perfectly as planned, dog. At the, la at the last second, Trevor Lawrence is about to, uh, uh, all of a sudden, Greg Williams said, I got you, dog. I got you. I'll take care of you. Adam Gates is out of here, but you're going to keep me as a D.C. Um, you, um, coach. Joe Douglas, because I took one for the team, Big Joe. Greg Williams took one for the team, Big Joe. He's the reason why you all going to get Trevor Lawrence, and that's the reason why you all should keep Greg Williams, dog, because he took one for the team, dog. Y'all talking about my man G-Dub, man. And you know the craziest thing, simultaneously what was going on in the Trevor Lawrence Bowl is the Jags and the Vikings. Simultaneously that game was going on. So at the same time, the Jets were winning, right? The, um, the Jags were actually going for two to tie the ball game against the Vikings to go to overtime. So the most exciting thing in the first section of the football Sunday happened. That's why I'm so excited, dog. The very first hour, the very first, the first segment of football game. You know what I'm saying? The 10 o'clock game for the West Coast or the 1 o'clock PM game for the East Coast. I mean, it was amazing because it came down to the Trevor Lawrence goal between the two of the worst teams in football, the New York Football Jets and the Jacksonville Jags, dude. And it was amazing two minutes of football. It was amazing two minutes. I didn't care about the rest of the game, but that two minutes, dog, that two minutes was why the NFL is the NFL, man. <laughs> I tell you. Damn, Sam Donald and them try to ruin Joe Douglas' his, his strategy, man. Woo! Now, that's how we start the show, y'all. Told y'all, man. That's just the beginning. I'm, I might be sweating today, man. It might be one of them days, dog. Telling y'all Monday morning football with the guru roaring on cut. You know? And it's real quick, man. I just want to hit on the, on the, on the Jags Viking games real quick, man. Uh, y'all got to start. Y'all got to get my man Mike Zimmer. What Mike Zimmer is doing. I, as a head coach in the Minnesota, dude, it's one of the most, uh, uh, it's, it's one of the best coaching jobs all season, bro. And Mike Zimmer has been one of the most disrespected head coach. I mean, I don't know why. It's because, I don't know, it's because he looks weird. Like, he looks like one of those guys that should be in, like, uh, in, 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 what's the dude? I don't know what he should be. He looks like one of those, he should be an extra in, 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 in Lord of the Flies or something, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just, he looked like an alien. I'm not going to lie. And he got that little voice. Hey, yeah, yeah, he, he just sound funny, right? Mike Zimmer is not, he sound funny. He looks older than the age. But you know what? That don't mean nothing, dog. Mike Zimmer is one of the best coaches in the NFL. And what this guy's doing this season with the Minnesota Vikings is going on notice, bro. And you know the guru, I notice ever a thing. Ever a, ever a thing. And Mike Zimmer, I notice you, homie. I'm talking about the Vikings ain't the rebuild, dog. Like, y'all don't realize, the Vikings are in a rebuild, though. Like, they starting the whole secondary, the DBs, they starting fresh. D-line, like, y'all, bruh. Like, the Vikings are in a rebuild, dog. And my man got those guys playing like it. Come on, they're 6-6 six and six right now. Basically, uh, uh, tied for the last spot for the playoff, dog. The Vikings started like 1-4, and four, dog. Like, what Mike Zimmer's been doing, bro, the last six weeks, bruh. I'm telling y'all, I like that, Mike. 
You know what I'm saying? Dalvin Cook has been the one, probably the best player in football the last five weeks. Let's be real. Like the last four to five weeks. Because, whoo, Dalvin is cooking, man. Mike Zimmer, hey, the guru is giving you kudos, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're disrespected, dog. You're disrespected. It's like I always tell people this. It's like people love the Miami Dolphins and Brian Flores, right? They love the Dolphins and Brian Flores. But, brah, the Dolphins and the Minnesota Vikings, in my opinion, are the exact same team, dog. Exact same culture, exact same team, man. Exact same team. But the difference is Kirk Cousin, you know what I'm saying? They want to, the Dolphins hope Tua could be a Kirk Cousin rather than a Sam Bradford. But in my opinion, he's going to be a Sam Bradford. That's just what it is. A lot of people respect uh, um, Flores, and he gets all the props, but it's time we all start respecting Mike Zimmer as far as one of the best coaches in all of football. Mike Zimmer is the top 10 coach in all of football, man. Because what he's doing over there, man, with Minnesota, he's making Minnesota a household name, bro. Like, we all look at Minnesota, we're like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, like, we, we laugh at Kirk Cousins, whatever, but at the end of the day, Minnesota is a, is a well-organized professional NFL team. And that's kudos to, to head coach Mike Zimmer. Straight up, kudos to head coach, man. And real quick, man, I got to talk about, you know, I, I just, I, you know, doing the whole draft process, right? Just transitioning to the Bengals and the, and, and the Dolphins. I, there was this thing about tour. Like, everybody loved tour. Like, everybody and their mama was like, this is a generational talent. This and I, and there's something about this dude I just, I didn't, I didn't particularly like, to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? I was the I was a loner in this situation. They were like, Guru, what's wrong with you? You can't see you blind, you this, you that too. It's the most generational, the most accurate, this and that, blah, blah, blah. I ever seen. I'm hearing all the all the sheeps media out there, the major media, I call them the sheeps, talking about two, it's the greatest thing. Even the year before, I'm tanking for two, blah, blah, blah. And all I, and when I looked at the film, because y'all know I'm all about the eye test, dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm about the eye analytics, man. Y'all could have the analytics. I'm about the eye analytics, bro. This eyes, I've been fooling me, homie. Hell nah. And when I see, when I saw Tua, bro, you guys were right. Very accurate. Now, was he the most accurate quarterback I ever seen in the history of the world? No. You know what I'm saying? What I saw personally, and I keep saying this, is I, I, Tua is Sam Bradford. It's like, y'all remember Sam Bradford, the guy that used to steal checks in the NFL? And Sam Bradford is too. What was Sam Bradford's most, most qualities he had? Why was Sam Bradford the number one overall pick in the job at that time? His biggest quality. Think about it. His draft profile. Accuracy. Accuracy, right? He's a good kid. Humble. Background. You look at the description coming out the draft for tour. It's the exact same thing for Sam Bradford, dog. It's like Tua is not no Drew Brees, dog. No, he's not no Drew Brees. He's not no Steve Young, what you guys were talking about. No, he's not athletically better than... No, he's not athletically special like Steve Young. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's not Drew Brees. He don't have... No, he's not Drew Brees, bro. What Tua is, it's a nice kid. You know what I'm saying? He has... Little arm, like he has no arm strength like a Sam Bradford, but one thing he could do, just like Sam Bradford, they could process information. They could get the ball out of their hand quick, and they could make accurate football play, and that's what Tua is. So you surround him with high IQ football players, you know what I'm saying, and a devastating defense, that's the recipe for Tua's success. But that's the thing is, Tua is not the bus driver. No, 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 no. Tua is not going to drive this team to the championship. He is not that type of quality. That's why I don't call him a generational talent and all of this nonsense. He don't drive. He's not a bus driver. He don't drive the bus. He don't drive the team. No, no, no. He's just on a bus. You know what I'm saying? He's just on a bus. He's on a bus stop when he'll get picked up. That's all he is. You know what I'm saying? And when he get on the bus, he might be the patrol. He might be the patrol in the bus, but he don't drive the bus. That's how I feel about Tua, man. Real quick, man, we're about to go on break. Well, right before the, I mean, right after the break, right after the break, I got to talk about um, what's going on over there, man. I got to talk about the Saints, Taysom Hill, and I got to talk about my coach. Y'all know I always talk about my coach on the Saints right after the break, right? And then 10, 15 minutes after that, 10, 15 minutes after that, I have to talk about there's something about Kyler Murray that, is, that he's doing, right? There's something Kyler Murray's doing that remind me of Aaron Rodgers, and it is not a good thing, right? 
right after the break, 10 minutes from now, I'm going to talk about something Kyler Murray's doing that kind of remind me of Aaron Rodgers, but that don't necessarily mean it's a good thing. This is Monday Morning Football with the Ghoul. Be right back after this station identification. You are listening to Monday Morning Football with the Ghoul. For more sports content, visit youtube.com slash world of sports network. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, man. I love this. Um, Y'all let me know, man. Y'all let me know. I love this. Appreciate y'all subscribing to the channel. Y'all, y'all doing a hell of a job, man. I'm seeing the channel just like rising, dog. Like, wow. Appreciate y'all, man. Hit that bell. And you guys on the podcast, y'all know the drill. You know what I'm saying? Give us that ratings. Give us that comment. Give me something so people know, man. I ain't got a school, y'all. I'm the guru, not the school teacher. <laughs> so let's continue real quick, man. I got to talk about something, right? I was looking at the Saints, the New Orleans Saints taking on the Atlanta Falcons, right? While I was watching that game, right, because I was going back and forth. You know, I'm watching every game. And then I was watching the Colts and the Texans ball game, right? And then it just dawned on me. I'm like... Oh, my God, bro. Like, the Saints and the freaking Colts, they're the freaking – they're the same team. They're like the same identical team. Like, for real, for real, man. You talking about Phillip Rivers, Drew Brees, uh, the defensively New Orleans Saints, uh, a highly capable defensive team. The, the, the Indianapolis Colts, a highly cap- capable defensive team. You know what I'm saying? You got good offensive mind coaches. And, and Dougie Fresh, and, and I said Dougie Fresh, and Frank Wright, my bad, and Frank Wright, and, 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 and my man Sean Payton. You know what I'm saying? I see this team, and I see uh, – I'm, I'm just seeing weapons everywhere. I see a collaboration of a great staff and a great organization. You know what I'm saying? But one thing I see that's separating these two teams, both of them are going to the playoff. It's like they're both Simon Street. But the difference is one person, one team had Taysom Hill and another t- team have a Jacoby Brissett. It's kind of so weird, right? When you all look at the Colts, don't you all think there might be a Taysom Hill away from being the New Orleans Saints? Like, let's just be real. They're Taysom Hill away. You take Taysom Hill from New Orleans – I see the Indianapolis Colts, homie. It's just like, I'm just like, what is the what is going on here? And in the NFC, we look at the uh, uh, the New Orleans Saints as a, as a number one seed, a Super Bowl contender. You know why? You know why? Because of their running game, their offensive line. It ain't because of Drew Brees. Let's just be real. It ain't because of Drew Brees. It's because of the defense. The strong offensive line, I keep saying this for the last two years, the New Orleans Saints got the best offensive line in football, but y'all going to keep realizing that when it comes to running the ball, the only thing Sean Payton has to do is run behind that line because that's what that line is built for, dog. And what takes in here because of the injury to Drew Brees, this is emphasizing that, and that's what you, that's why you see the New Orleans Saints taking, up, taking that steps, dog. You see them taking steps and stride because now they're playing to the strength of the team, which is the offensive line, bro. It's like I've been saying this, man. The strength of the New Orleans Saints is the O-line and the D-line, bro. The O-line and the D-line. And you add um, Drew Brees' high-Q intelligence and then put in Taysom, Taysom Hill's uh, uh, athletic ability. Bro, I look at the Colts. They try to bring in Jacoby Brissett to do a, a, a RPO, run option. And you, it's a major difference in athletic ability, dog, between Brissett and, and Taysom Hill. And frankly, y'all, Taysom Hill is a better quarterback than Jacoby Brissett. He's a better quarterback. Right now, if the Colts, I'm going to repeat this, if the Indianapolis Colts had Taysom Hill, We'll be sitting down and say the Colts probably be the number one team and the scariest team to beat um, the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC, hands down. Let's just be real. If the Colts have Taysom Hill, we'll sit right here and be like, they have everything. They're the same team, dog. They're the same team. Big receivers, uh, big possession receivers, same team. Fast receivers, same. they got same personnel grouping, dog. But the difference is, though, Philip Rivers, just like Drew Brees, 
We all know they're limited. But the Saints have Taysom Hill. And the Colts have Jacoby Brissett. And that might be the reason why the Colts will but will only be what? More than likely one and done in the playoff. And the New Orleans Saints more than likely will have the best record in all of uh, AF, NFC. Not because of Drew Brees. Because of Taysom Hill, the offensive line, and that defensive line, man. I got to give a quick little shout out to David... My African brother, man, David Anuoeda over there, man, having a career year for the defensive line for the New Orleans Saints, man. Man. Sorry, Colts. But real quick, y'all, I got to talk. Talk because I got to give respect right now. Before I go on break, before a quick little break. There's certain things that's going on, and I don't think, I don't like it. I really don't like it. Right now, as far as defensive player of the year, I'm telling y'all and I'm looking at y'all right now. That boy in Miami, that cornerback in Miami, right now should start getting names. She start getting accolades as far as candidate for defensive player of the year. Yes, my boy, that boy, Xavier Howard, the cornerback from the Miami Dolphins. Yes. The playoff bound Miami Dolphins with one of the best defenses in all of football. My man is the catalyst. Is the catalyst leading the league with eight INTs. Dog, you all see this man got more INTs. Well, I gotta look at my numbers. This man got more INTs than guys than than, 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 than guys got sacks, dog. Then guys got sacks, dog. This guy got more INT than Zeke got TDs. Like, let's be real. This man is doing so much. Like, I can't even look at my notes, dog. I can't even look at my notes because it's too much, dog. It's too much stuff. Because I'm so impressed with Xavier Howard, dog. It's like this. Y'all remember last year, um, Stephon Gilmore won Defensive Player of the Year, right? Outstanding season. No disrespect. But look at the numbers, what Stephon Gilmore did last year, dog. Put that numbers, what Gilmore did last year. What, we have six INTs, uh, one to the house. Impressive, impressive. Shutdown season. Bro, y'all put that number, what Xavier Howard is doing right now, to the same number what uh, my man Gilmore did. Bro, y'all better stop it. Y'all better start putting this kid's name out there as defensive player of the year, man. I'm talking about you better put in that short list because what this man is doing, bro, this man played freaking, what, what, we're in week 13. This man got eight picks in 13 weeks, dog, and he had a bye, dog, so he only played, what, 11, 12 games, dog? Bro, this man getting picked, bro, come on, man, like, come on, this dude, this dude should be like in Ocean's 12 or Ocean 11 because he's just getting, he's stealing from, from, the, from Vegas, dog. This man is just, man, look, look, put it like this. My man played 52 career games in the NFL, and he has 20 career picks. My man get picks every two and a half games, dog. Like, are you serious? That's on, that, that don't even make sense. Like, when I say that, I'm like, it don't even make sense. I'm not even a stats guy. I don't care because I'm all about that analytic. But, bro, my man got 20 picks in 52 games, homie. Like, come on, dog. Come on, dog. It's time, y'all. And the NFL, you know I'm the guru. I give my roses out. Paul's no home, but I don't sound right. I give flowers. You know what I'm saying? I give the flowers. Just like that dude on Bachelorette. And so y'all, y'all, please tell me that dude's name. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like that dude from the Bachelorette, dog. I'm passing out roses. And my man, Xavier Howard, get the rose, man. And you're going to be shortlist. And you're right now. If the season starts today, you are my defensive player of the year. Uh, We're going to take a short break, man. Short break. But right after the break, right after the break, I got to talk about um, uh, uh, Belichick. You know what I'm saying? The uh, coach's difference, man. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just, uh, oh, my goodness. Belichick versus Anthony Lynn. I mean, it was just a mismatch. This was worse than wearing two mismatched socks, dog. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, I got to talk about Kyler Murray, man. Kyler Murray do some things that kind of remind me of Aaron Rodgers, but, hey, I don't think it's, a, it's not what y'all are thinking about. This is 
Monday Morning Football with the Guru. You are listening to Monday Morning Football with the Guru. For more sports content, visit youtube.com slash world of sports network. Oh, man. Monday Morning Football with the Guru. Hey, y'all on the podcast. Y'all listening. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to all y'all. Yeah. Go give me that review and hit that. Is that the review? Is that what it's called? Is that what it's called, producer review? Yeah, whatever it's called. Give me a review. Give me a rating. Y'all know what you got to do to make sure we get more love. But you guys on the YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit that bell. You know that little subscribe cute thing that's flowing right here? You know that little red thing right there? I think it's right here or right there. Look, it's, I don't know where it's at, but just ding it. Ding it, ding it. <laughs> hey, man, let's move on real quick, man. I want to talk about the the Pats and the, 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 the Los Angeles Chargers, man. And to me, when I saw it, this game was just, I mean – I expected this, but I didn't, I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't expect a beatdown like this. I expected the charge. I mean, the Patriots to beat him because it's just a different in coaching level. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's levels to this, man. And specifically, like, and like any other sports. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about basketball, baseball, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I know one thing about football. Coaching probably has more precedent. It's more valued than probably in any sport in, in, in the globe, for real, for real. Like, for real, for real. And when you see a, dis- a discrepancy in coaching, it's glaringly obvious. You know what I'm saying? Let's just look at the Chargers and the, uh, and, uh, and the Patriots. The Los Angeles Chargers got a better roster than the New England Patriots. That is a fact. No cap. We all know that. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about a better receiving core. You talking about Joey Bowser. You talking about Melvin Ingram. You talking about a straight roster of players. You know what I'm saying? Compared to New England. We don't even, I don't even, I can't even pronounce the dude that's, that was getting the punt return today, man. You know what I'm saying? Gunnar o- Olinsky? It's like I'm watching James Bond movie or something. Gunnar Olinsky. I don't know who the heck is Gunnar o- Olinsky. What is this 007? This, that don't even sound like a full... Man, whatever, man. He looked like he should be in James Bond. He even got the name of Gunner. You know what I'm saying? Like one of them bad guys in 007. Like, Anthony Lynn is way over his head. And please, y'all, let's get this man out of his misery, man. My man Telesco, get my man out of his misery, dude. It's like there's certain guys that you can tell are coordinators and there's certain guys that are coaches, head coaches. Bill Belichick ran circles around this dude. Like, it was so embarrassing, dog. It was so, this was a home game. I mean, you looking at the Los Angeles Chargers every week, they're getting worse. Every week, they are getting worse. And I can't blame anything but the coaching. And, you know, I, I'm not the one to, get, to say get coaches fired unless they suck. Yes, yes, y'all know. Just like Matt Patricia, you know, he sucked. So I guess I am the one to talk about coaches get fired. You never mind, I take that back. So I do talk about coaches get fired because that's what I was talking about for a whole year and a half. Bill O'Brien got to go. <laughs> Matt Patricia got to go. Matt Nagy got to go. Anthony Lynn, you are now on the chopping blocks, dude. And you know one thing, bro? Hey, you better start looking for You better put that house to, for sale, dog. You know what I'm saying? You better tell the kids, though. You better start looking for a new school, man. That L.A. life, that L.A. life ain't for you, Anthony Lynn. You don't even look. He don't even look like an L.A. guy. I think Anthony Lynn should be like in Chicago or something. He look like he should be in a cold weather city. You know what I'm saying? He got that beard and all that. He don't even fit L.A. It was just a bad matchup. He should be like in Cincinnati, in the Midwest or something. He don't. He don't. It just don't look right. I'm sorry. Anthony Lynn, you're way above your head, bro. You're way above your head, man. And I'm sorry, bro. I really am because it's not even funny no more. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not even like, it's like, it's like Adam Gates for real, man. It's like Adam Gates. He might be a step above Adam Gates. I'm, I, he might, I, I really don't know. Like, I just know one thing. The Los Angeles Chargers are deteriorating every week. Every week. They're not disciplined. 
They're, they're, they're losing all phases of the game. They lost in, in special team, punt return, punt block, field goal. Like, bro, this it's over, dog. Once you lose in every phases of the game, that's a reflection of the coaching. That's all it is, bro. Once you lose every level, from special team to, to offensively to defensively, hell, you didn't score a damn point, dog. You didn't score a damn point. That's a reflection of horrible coaching, man. I mean, it was a coaching clinic, dog. That's what you call a coaching clinic. Bill Belichick did to uh, uh, whatever Anthony Lynn. Because I ain't even going to talk about Justin Herbert because it wasn't even fair. It wasn't fair, dog. You know what I'm saying? Justin Herbert didn't have a prayer because he's just doing what he's coached to do. That's why coaching is so precedent in the NFL. It's more valuable than any other sport because you do what the coach tell you to do. And my man Anthony Lynn is telling his team to do things that no real coach would tell his team to do. That's just real talk, man. Real talk. All right, so let's just move on real quick, man, from out coached. <laughs> so my man Kyler Murray, man, there's something about Kyler Murray, dude, and we all love Kyler Murray. And you all know I'm the guru. You know I love Kyler Murray, man. I'm a huge Kyler Murray fan, man. But there's certain things I'm noticing about Kyler Murray that I don't like, bro. I don't like, man. You know what I'm saying? I've been watching Kyler Murray for, you know, since the last year and a half. And I'm really not – I don't like his mannerism on the sideline. I don't like the way he acts. I don't like his mannerism when things are not going right. And this is kind of – it's kind of giving me a red flag because it's kind of reminding me of that Aaron Rodgers situation. He got that Aaron Rodgers thing in him, dog. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen Kyler Murray like he's always – Twisting his face is I when things don't go right, he sails it in his face like he's not around his. I just I don't like this to me. That's showing lack of leadership, bro. I don't think Kyler Murray, from what I've seen, and I've been monitoring this situation since 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 I've noticed it, since I've noticed it, man. And like, I don't for my quarterback, I don't like that. Like I said, I'm the type that I like, I like the Russell Wilson aspect of things. I like the guys that come have a conversation. I like the Tom Brady, when you're doing bad, give you the business. I like guys that pull you to the side and be like, hey, let's have a conversation, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm an OG, man. You know what I'm saying? I was raised up by OGs. When they want to come haul at you, they're like, yo, when you're doing something, you know what they do? They go, yo, they have a conversation. Yo, let me come haul at you, dog. Kyler Murray, all that. That Cali cool shit he got going on, he comes to the sideline. I'm too cool. It's like it's it's annoying, bro. It's annoying, Kyle. It's like you got to be able to galvanize your team. You look at the Arizona Cardinals, just like the Green Bay Packers. They're not a very team. They're not a very good team from coming from behind. They're not a very good team coming from behind. That's because they have a leader, a quarterback leader that don't have adversity tolerance and I just don't have positivity vibe. I just I just don't like it, man. I don't like it. I just feel like it's that Aaron Rodgers thing, man. You know what I'm saying? You know how Aaron Rodgers be rolling his eyes, man? You know what I'm saying? When things are not going right, he's sucking his teeth. He's just looking at you like, come on, bro. I see the same thing in Kyler Murray, man. I don't like it, man. I like me some Kyler Murray. I want to like Kyler Murray. But that I just I can't do it, bro. You gotta change that mannerism, though. You gotta slow, you gotta flow, bro. Like that's the thing about being a great leader, dog. People look at you. It's not what you say. It's not what you say every time, bro. It's not what you say. It's the people just look at you, it's how you act. Sometimes you just don't say anything at all. Your mannerism says more than anything else, bro. And Kyler, man, I like you, bro. Don't go down that road, man. You know what I'm saying? Work on that, homie. Ain't nobody perfect. Work on that, man. Work on that. Don't, don't, don't. You got to be able to galvanize. You, your team got to look at you, dog, and see and, have for, and for them to have faith. But if they look in the sideline or they look at you, all of a sudden you're twisting your face, you're making this, your eye contact is this, you're being isolated, that don't galvanize a team, bro. That don't. That don't. That's why guys like Aaron Rodgers have problems when they're behind. And Kyler, don't fall into that trap, man. Please don't. I'm a fan of yours, dog. Don't be on my book. Don't be on my dirt list like Aaron Rodgers, man. Uh-uh. 
No, nah, don't hang out with that clown, man. Nah. -uh. <laughs> oh man. I know you guys are like, man, the goo always talk about A Rod. He hates A Rod. Oh well. I don't hate the guy. I just don't like the guy, man. I think he's a good football player. I just, you know, that's all. <laughs> but I I know one thing, I know who's not a very good football player. Real quick. Uh, Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles. Carson Wentz, dog. Carson Wentz stinks. And you know what? I'm not going to come here and bash on Carson Wentz because it's not about – nah, 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 nah. Because it's not his fault, man. Like, yeah, some of it is his fault. Let me take that back. He sucks because some of it is his fault because he sucks. But it's not all his fault, man. And right now, I'm a, uh, my man Howie, the Philadelphia organization in the front office led by Howie Rosen and company, like, they are really, really destroying the Philadelphia Eagles organization. Let's just be real, dog. Talking about those guys having picked any talented players, it's like they, they stuck in Back to the Future. They thought that, that squad would, uh, they, they, the squad they won the Super Bowl with, they thought for some reason they all just going to be freeze and keep the talent and, and, and they don't, they're not going to age. Like, he is basically the same exact team from 2000, whatever, 16, 17, I don't even remember what year it was, dude. It seemed like it was so long ago, dog. It's the same thing. Alshon Jeffries, uh, Deshaun Jackson is still on the rock. Like, come on, bro. Come on, man. Come on, dog. Bro, look at the, the last three, four years draft class, dog, for the Philadelphia Eagles, dog. 2017, my man Derek Barnett. Mm, okay, first round. Sidney Jones. Hmm. Russell Douglas, hmm, 2018, who, where they get, I remember they traded the first round pick, they got Dallas Goddard, Dallas, hmm, Mr. Uh, Devonce, Avance Maddox, hmm, dude, the, uh, the, who, or 2019, Andre Dillard, I haven't even seen this dude played yet, bro, you know what I'm saying, J.J. Oswego, Whiteside, who are these people, dog, who are these people, man, who, who, <laughs> Bro, it's like, it's so funny how success hits you sometimes. You know what I mean? And, and the difference between a genius and, and one-hit wonders. You know what I'm saying? A genius, a successful mindset person, you know what I'm saying? They know how to scale. They, they expect certain things. They don't just don't stay in their morals. They always improve. They keep doing things to get better and better, to sustain their excellence. It's not about getting to excellence. It's about sustaining excellence. The Philadelphia Eagles got to excellence, but obviously they don't know how to sustain excellence. Plain and simple, bro. Plain and simple. Andy Reid leaving over there. Frank Wright. I mean, the whole, the smart, the intelligence of the Philadelphia Eagles left after the Super Bowl or the year prior to the Super Bowl. And the dummies stay, man. Howie Rosen, come on, man. Come on, man. This is this is this is all front office, man. I see you, Carson, man. They they drafting Jalen Hurts and all that. Come on, man. It's front office, man. It's front office. It's time to move on, man. It's time to move. And the sad thing is, they can't even move on because they're stuck with this guy. They're stuck with that bank account, man. Terrible decision everywhere, man. I hope that bench was was not a, a Doug Peterson move, dog. You know what I'm saying? I hope it wasn't a Doug Peterson move, dog, because they they owe this dude so much money. Like, don't be surprised with doing all this. Like, my man Carson Wentz still going to be the starter next week. So, I, like, I, I won't be surprised because I think this might be all for show because Carson Wentz is going to be the starter next week. That's my that's my honest opinion, man. And Howie Rosen, you snake. I don't, I'm not a fan of you, dog. Nah, nah, not at all, man. I think you'll ruin the situation and, and – Philly, I know you are, you guys love your sports. Y'all can see the same thing I can see. It ain't all about it ain't only about Carson Wentz, man, because he needs talent. And that boy Howie hasn't done his part of the job to give this man some talent, man. Woo, man, real quick. Last segment, man. But it's a sad segment, man, because it's about the whole team. Man, they took an L, man. Kudos, man. I got to give hats off, man. Hats off to Coach, Coach Judd and company, man. That's his name, Judd, whatever his name is. You know what I'm saying? Great, great game plan, man, for the New York football giants, man. That's a good team right there, man. 
Hey, that's a tough team right there, bro. Like, I, hey, the New York Giants are ascending, man. The record might not show it, but that boy could coach. And I got to give my fly. Hey, 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 I'm giving my roses out. My bad. Hey, my bad, Judd. You know what I'm saying? My bad, homie. The guru, man, I'm a man, bro. When a man sometimes is wrong, a man got to admit it's wrong, man. Coach, I don't even know who the hell you were, dog. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? Respect, man. You and your boy. Your boy over there uh, did an amazing job, man. Your boy, you and Patrick Graham, the D.C., what the, what y'all came up with against Russ was amazing, dog. It was amazing. I mean, it was it was belly checking, man. The way y'all just confused Russ. Russ was like this is probably the most I've seen Russ confusing in a long time. I don't care about the games he was throwing picks and all that, but this game from the snap, from the sound they said height. I mean, defensively, man, Patrick Graham was on his. Oh my God, my man was on his P's and Q's, homie. My man was on his P's and Q's. This young defensive coordinator right here, man. Obviously, the Belichick disciple. I'm watching you, homie. You know the guru love me some defensive defense, and I love me some DC. I'm watching you, Patrick. You know what I'm saying? I'm watching you, man, because right now, you just got on the Google's radar, dog. I mean, peeping y'all, especially the last four weeks, the Giants' defense is nice. The Giants' defense is nice. I mean, it's, it's kind of – you watch the Miami Dolphins' defense – it's similar to the Giants. It's all belly check in, man. It's all the belly check in defense, dog. It's like they show you something pre snap, but as soon as you said height, it's something totally different, dog. Something totally different. And the New York Football Giants are executing at a high level, bro. And this was a major, major win, dog. Impressive win, man. They didn't, the Seahawks didn't lose this game. The Giants came in and took this W, dog. Well earned, man. Well earned, Coach, Coach, Coach Judd, man. And you know what? Patrick, hey, the D.C., I'm watching you, homie. I'm watching you. Now you got to compound this. Right now, the New York football Giants might be the best team in the NFC East. Real talk. Who would have known that? Who would have known? I, I thought they were going to be the laughing stock. You know, Dave Gettleman, this and that. But, oh, my God. Kudos. Hey, Dave Gettleman, I got to give you your props too, homie. I got to give it to you, Dave. Like, I, hey, I ain't going to lie, man. This is kudos, my man. It's all about giving roses and flowers to guys that deserve it, dog. And the guru is a real man. And the Giants, the G-Men, came into PNW. They came into Russell House. Whose house? Russ House. They came into Russ House, and they're like, you know Russ? And they took Russ's chain. You all know how Russ like wearing his chain on his IG? The Giants came right down here in Central Link, or the formerly known as Central Link, and took Russell's chain, man. And Russ couldn't do nothing about it, dog. Couldn't do nothing about it. This is Monday Morning Football with the Guru. Y'all know the drill, man. Like this, love this, share this, and I'm out.